Hi, I'm Danica Fine with Confluent, here to tell you what's new with Apache Kafka 3.5. There are a lot of great kips and updates in this release, so just sit back, relax, and let the kips happen. Let's kick things off with updates from Kafka Core. We've got a doozy for you to start. KIP 833 provides an updated timeline for craft. And since all we want are happy clusters, I think it's worth it. Apache Kafka 3.5, this release, is the first bridge release between Zookeeper and craft modes, meaning that you can preview migrating from Zookeeper mode clusters to craft mode clusters. Along with that, we're officially marking Zookeeper mode as deprecated. With Apache Kafka 3.6, migrating from Zookeeper to craft clusters will be general availability. You'll also see support for JBOD and delegation tokens in craft mode. Apache Kafka 3.7 will be the final bridge release to smoothly transition from Zookeeper to a craft-only cluster. But don't worry, you have more than enough time to wrap things up and say your goodbyes because Zookeeper won't officially be removed until Apache Kafka version 4.0. Building on KIP 8.3.3, we have KIP 8.6.6, which introduces feature-complete migrations from Zookeeper-based clusters to craft mode clusters that you're encouraged to test. As an added bonus, after enabling craft migration, the cluster will use dual write mode so that you can safely transition control to craft while also allowing failback to Zookeeper just in case. Isn't it fantastic that you can change your mind and still safely work with all these happy innovative things? Next up, we have KIP 881, which has to do with rack aware partition assignments for Kafka consumers. And no, that's not a mistake. You may recall that I mentioned KIP 881 as part of the Apache Kafka 3.4 release, but at that time, the KIP was only partially complete. The KIP is meant to be a bridge between existing client protocols and the new consumer group protocol as outlined by KIP 848. So in this release, you'll see new client-side assigner logic for rack-aware consumer balancing. Check out the release notes for more details. KIP 900 brings support for SASL Scram to craft mode clusters. If you're not familiar, SASL Scram is a popular authentication mechanism for setting up access control lists, or ACLs, within Kafka. These ACLs are pretty important as they ensure that the brokers in the cluster have the right credentials to interact with each other, as well as the controller. In Zookeeper mode Kafka clusters, this Kafka metadata was added to and maintained by the Zookeeper cluster itself. But it's a little different with Craft. KIP 900 adds the ability to bootstrap your craft controllers with your Scram ACLs during cluster creation with the Kafka storage.sh script on the command line using the add Scram parameter. Moving on, we have KIP 903. The motivation behind this KIP is interesting and involves a very specific scenario. So let's imagine together that a broker reboots, but some logs haven't yet been flushed from the page cache. Well, in that case, the data on the broker is lost. Most of the time, this is okay though, because the controller will have removed the rebooting broker from the list of in-sync replicas. So any real damage is limited, and the rebooting broker has a chance to catch up later. But what if a leader of one of the partitions crashes at the same time? Then the rebooting broker could be marked as a partition leader, making the data loss a very real concern. KIP 903 eliminates this issue by ensuring that replicas with a stale broker epic won't be able to join the ISR list. Keep in mind that since Zookeeper mode will be removed in Apache Kafka 4.0, the scope of KIP 903 is only for craft mode clusters. Next up, let me introduce you to KIP 915. But first, a question. What happens when you want to downgrade transaction and group coordinators after new fields have been added to the transaction state or consumer offsets topics? If you've ever had to do that, you know it's tough. Since major changes have been made to the consumer group coordinator under KIP 848, KIP 915 seeks to make this downgrade process easier by laying a generic foundation for both coordinators and opening the door to backward compatible changes to the record schemas through the use of tag fields. Any future tag fields won't require a version bump, and older brokers can simply ignore the tag fields that they don't recognize. KIP 641 creates a new Java interface to replace Kafka Common Message Reader. Why? Well, developers need a custom reader to produce and consume custom records, which means that they need a Java public interface in the client's module to implement for their custom logic. KIP 641 introduces a new record reader interface to replace the message reader Scala trait. Note that the message reader trait will be marked for deprecation. Finally, for Kafka core updates, we have KIP 887. 
You may have noticed that it's not currently possible to inject additional custom configurations stored in environment variables. And that's no good. So KIP887 provides a new implementation of the config provider interface called NVAR config provider. This new config provider implementation gets around this injection issue by programmatically providing the map returned by system.getEnv. Now, every day is a good day when you use Kafka Streams. So next up, we have a couple of really cool Kafka Streams kits. First, we have KIP889. As you may know, state stores currently only support storing the most recent value per key. And this is fine for a lot of use cases, but that implementation limits Kafka Streams' ability to leverage temporal join semantics for stream to table joins. KIP889 provides the base implementation of version state stores, which add a temporal element to state stores in Kafka Streams. When records are inserted into a state store that implements the new version state store interface, they need to include a timestamp. The get method to fetch from a version state store also includes an as of timestamp. But it's not enough to just implement version state stores. We need to provide a means for these to be recognized and utilized by the streams DSL. So we have to give KIP889 a friend. Like I always say, everyone needs a friend. So let's introduce KIP914. KIP914 doesn't make any changes to public interfaces to recognize version state stores, but it does affect how version state stores are handled behind the scenes. By default, the streams DSL won't use version state stores. You'll have to explicitly instantiate and pass them via materialized as into K tables. Version state stores may affect each of the DSL processors in different ways, so check the docs for more details. Next for Kafka Streams, we have KIP399, which improves the error handling capabilities in Kafka Streams when Kafka Streams fails to serialize messages. It provides an interface to insert custom messaging for errors and indicate to Streams whether or not it should rethrow the exception, thus causing the application to fail over. Our final Kafka Streams KIP is KIP904, which affects table aggregation semantics. There's a lot going on for this KIP, so let's set the stage. Whenever you aggregate a table and conduct a group by, events are sent to an internal repartition topic. Since you could potentially change the grouping key within the aggregation group by, two events are sent downstream to processor nodes. One event with the old key and old value, and another event with a new key and new value. These events can then be subtracted from or added to the corresponding aggregate associated with the old and new keys respectively. In that case, the aggregation is a two-step process, but sometimes the key doesn't change and sending two events downstream creates an unnecessary amount of noise. KIP904 seeks to remove this noise by making aggregation happen in one step. This feature is on by default and cannot be disabled. If your topology contains a K-table aggregation operator, you'll need to do a two-round rolling bounds upgrade. Finally, let's hear from some Kafka Connect updates. First, we have KIP710, an update to Mirror Maker 2. Since it was introduced, Mirror Maker 2 has had the capability to run a dedicated cluster, allowing multiple connect clusters and replication flows to run within it. But there were some limitations. Namely, dedicated Mirror Maker 2 clusters don't have a connect rest server, meaning that follower to leader communication was impossible between nodes. Also in dedicated mode, Mirror Maker 2 eagerly resolves configuration provider references in connector configs, which meant that you were unable to provide host-specific or sensitive configurations through the indirection of configuration providers. To get around these limitations, KIP710 provides the option to use an internal-only REST server that can be enabled by setting dedicated mode enable internal REST equal to true, and it allows for the lazy evaluation of configuration references. Moving on, KIP875 offers first-class support for offsets in Kafka Connect. With the current implementation of this KIP, Connect cluster administrators can read offsets for both source and sync connectors. In the future, as part of Apache Kafka 3.6, administrators will also have the ability to alter and reset connector offsets. Also in this release, KIP875 adds a new stop state for connectors, which allows users to shut down connectors and maintain connector configurations without utilizing resources. Next is KIP894, which also affects Mirror Maker 2. When syncing topic configurations for broker compatibility, Mirror Maker 2 uses the deprecated Alter Configs API. If you wanted to use the Alter Configs API to update a handful of configurations, any existing configuration parameters that aren't explicitly sent along as part of the configuration update will be reset to the default value for those configurations. And that's not always a good thing. 
In the context of Mirror Maker 2, this could result in remote topic configurations being removed unintentionally. Since Apache Kafka version 2.3, the more flexible incremental alter configs API has been available, and KIP 894 makes it available for use in Mirror Maker 2. The change adds a new use incremental alter config configuration, which takes values requested, never, or required. Check out the docs to see how to use these parameters. Our final Kafka Connect update is from KIP 911. To help monitor mirroring deployments, this KIP adds a new source tag for the metrics generated by the mirror source connector. By setting add source alias two metrics to true, a new tag with the name of the source cluster will be added to the front of the list of existing tags. All right, I think that's all we needed for the finishing touches. After all of that, you have to believe there's a Kafka expert hidden at the bottom of every single one of us, but it's hard to see things when you're too close. So let's take a step back and look. Would you look at that? You know, I'm convinced that the secret to doing anything is just believing you can do it. And I'm pretty proud of what we got through today. But that's all I have to share for now. I, I know we crowded a lot of information into this one video, but there are even more KIPs in this release. So head on over to the Confluent blog or read through the full release notes to see what else is new. And more importantly, let's not forget just how much work goes into these KIPs every release. If you happen to know someone from the community who worked hard on a KIP, reach out to them and let these special people in your life know just how special they are to you. And with that, one last reminder, it's Kafka. It's interesting, it's fun. So get on out there and build something cool.